I want to welcome everyone back here. Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well and everyone is safe and healthy. Um, let's go ahead and open up and please open up your hearts and lift up your hands as we pray and get ready for worship time today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you. We want to humble ourselves and say thank you. We appreciate you. We, we know that you are sovereign Lord. And today, Lord God, we want to come before you to honor and glorify you because you deserve the glory. So may we just open up our hearts and lift up our hands and just praise you because, again, your name can be lifted up to the heavens because you deserve the glory. So thank you today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Yes, Lord, we, we join in your embrace today, Lord God. 
And we are grateful again that you are here with us and that you have your hands wrapped around us, Lord, lifting us and carrying us everywhere. And everywhere we may be, we know that you are with us. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you that we had this opportunity to worship and honor you. What a wonderful name that you have. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and move on into our Apostles' Creed. So please go ahead and join with me as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Well, good morning to all of you. It's good to see everybody this wonderful morning, and we do welcome everyone back to church today. Well, let's go ahead and get started here today, and let's open up in prayer. So please, again, join with me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, and we thank you that we had an opportunity to worship and honor you. But Lord, we just pray for our hearts to be open again, our ears to be open, Lord, to receive your words today. And may we apply your words into our hearts, knowing that you are always with us. Jesus, you died on the cross for us, Lord, and we recognize that through you, our sins are forgiven today. And that, Lord, we always have you by our side. And not only that, we recognize that one day, Lord, you're going to come back. So that our hope is, is lying upon that, Lord, that you will return. So thank you, Lord. But we also recognize that, Holy Spirit, you are within us today, teaching us, guiding us, empowering us, keeping us healthy, keeping us strong, Lord. We know that you are with us. So thank you again, Lord. We want to come before you. We want to continue to pray not only for ourselves but for others, Lord, that others can get to know the goodness that is you. So, Lord, may we just always know that we always have a testimony and a way to witness and share your good news with others. We love you, Lord God. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, today I wanted to talk about that God is embracing you. And so if you have your Bibles or your Bible app today, please go ahead and turn to the book of John. We're going to go into John chapter 21 and I'm going to read from verses 2 through 7, and you're going to have some of these verses up on the screen with you too today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here with verse number 2, and this is what it says. And again, I'm reading from the NIV version here. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Verse 3 says, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. Verse 4 says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He came out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Verse 6 says, he, and he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. And finally in verse 7, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. I wanted to talk today about how that Jesus has changed our lives, and he has transformed us. And because of it, we recognize and understand that God is always embracing us. And so let's go into the scriptures today. Let's go into it. Let's see what it talks about. What is going on here in the scriptures today. So the disciples have been with Jesus for the last three years of their lives. And throughout these last three years, they've experienced and witnessed many miracles and events. 
And recently, this included the triumphal entry, the crucifixion, and the resurrection. So they would have witnessed and experienced all of these events just recently in their lives. And up to this point here right now, they knew that Jesus had risen, for Jesus had already appeared to them. They've, he's already talked to them. But they knew that Jesus had risen. But at this point right now in the book of John here, uh, we, we see that Jesus hadn't given them the command to, uh, that was described in Acts chapter 1, where he tells the disciples to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. He hadn't given that command to them yet. So, um, so the, the disciples were a little bit, like they didn't know what to do. They were confused. And so what did they decide to do? They decided to go back to Galilee and travel back to Galilee and to go back to fishing. Now, the scriptures tell us that after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to over 500 people over a period of 40 days. And again, um, here we're going to see that Jesus appears in Galilee here to seven of his disciples who had gone back to fishing. Now, the question might come up, well, why did they go back to fishing? They, they witnessed all of these amazing things that Jesus did, and, and not only that, they knew that Jesus resurrected and he was alive and he appeared to them. So why did they go back to fishing? Well, once, one thing is that, again, they were confused. They didn't know what to do now at this point. And not only that, they realized that they still needed to survive. They still needed to eat. They still needed to feed their families. So therefore, they, they went back to doing what they were good at, what they were best at, which was fishing. Uh, if we remember that prior to, to following Jesus, these seven disciples were professional fishermen. And that was their job. They were experts in that profession. And they knew that going out fishing, going out at night was the right thing to do in order to get a favorable amount of fish. Again, they were experts at fishing, so they knew exactly what they needed to do. And they were following that previous plan and that previous uh, protocol that they would be using to gain or to get a lot of fish. However, what we see in the scriptures, it says that, however, after fishing all night long, they came back early in the morning and they didn't catch anything at all. Imagine their frustration. I mean, these guys were experts at what they were doing, experts in fish, as fishermen. But yet that night, they caught nothing. You can imagine how frustrated they might have been. Um, you know, there was a possibility that in the last three years, you know, they were not doing much fishing. Maybe they lost their touch. I mean, with their craft. Maybe they were no longer skilled at it. Um, they, again, they probably hadn't done much fishing in the last three years. So you could also imagine probably how annoyed they were at this time. But a question that may have cropped up into their heads is, as they were coming back to shore is, what were they going to do now? You know, they didn't have any fish with them. So you can imagine how concerned they could have been. Then, as they were approaching the shore, we see the scriptures tell us that there was a man that was standing there and a voice that called out to them. And this man tells them to throw their net to the other side. And the scriptures again tell us that the, the disciples, they didn't know, they didn't recognize, they didn't see who this man was. But out of, in some sense, desperation, they just listened to this stranger who told them, put your nets to the other side or put your nets, throw your nets to the right side of the boat. So they just went ahead and followed and did it. And they listened anyway, and they put their net to the other side of the boat. And what happens instantly? Lo and behold, immediately the fish start jumping into their net. So much fish jumped into their net that they were unable to haul their net in. I think it, we, we, if you continue reading, it says that there was about 153 large fish. Then suddenly, one of the, one of the disciples realized who was standing there. And all along this whole time, it was Jesus 
that was standing there. Can you imagine how wonderful it must have been for those seven disciples to finally recognize and see that, hey, that's Jesus standing there. Uh, he, he's waving to us. He's calling to us. He's shouting to us. He's, tell, he's the one telling us to throw the net over to the other side. And what we see in verse 7 is that immediately Peter puts on his, 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 his coat or, 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 or he puts on his coat and garment and he he dives into the water and he runs out to meet Jesus. Can you just uh, imagine that wonderfulness of, of what Peter was experiencing at, at this time when he recognized, wow, right in front of me, right there is our Lord Jesus. And he's back. He's returned again. He's here. And so what can we, through this story of what we see here today, what can we gather from this story well, one thing that we can understand is that number one here today is that God will always prevail. What do I mean by that? Today, again, you know, we're in this situation right now in this uh, coronavirus situation, which may be causing uh, you to become like very uncomfortable. Maybe you're, you're, you've been, uh, you're going through stresses right now because of it. Maybe you're, you're wondering about when you're going to get to go back to work again. Maybe this virus has now leads you to a point where you're having a very hard time within your life. And, you know, being in a situation that you don't want to be in and you're more stressed out ever than ever before. Or maybe this situation has, has not affected you in any way. Well, ultimately, we do know is that through everything, God will prevail. This story kind of shows us that, gives us a, a, a quick example of that. The disciples, again, the disciples, for the last three years of their lives, they were following Jesus, learning from Jesus, uh, trying, you know, uh, doing miracles alongside Jesus. And, and then in the last, uh, recently, they would, they, they again witnessed the triumphal entry. They witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus. And then they witnessed that Jesus came back and that he returned. He resurrected. And, but then there was not a lot of direction after that. So they were confused. They didn't know what to do at this point. So they decided, you know what? Let's just go back to fishing. Let's go back to doing what we, we know what is best. But however, even though they were experts at being fishermen, we see in the scriptures that that night when they went back to go fishing, they were not able to catch anything at all until what happens, until they listened to Jesus, where Jesus said, put your net on the other side. And when they obeyed, all of a sudden, this enormous catch jumped into the nets, so much so that they couldn't even haul the net in. So I wanted to just ex uh, remind all of us that we can always and trust that God will always prevail in our lives. And one reminder is that when we are in, when we align ourselves with God, when we, uh, when we have a, a, a alignment with God, you'll, you'll be able to see his blessings in every area of your life. And, and that's in recognition of the fact that God will always prevail. Number two today is that God transformed your life so that you can have a purpose. So this is a, a, another point from this story that we can learn is the fact that God transforms our lives to have a purpose. You know, one of the greatest reasons or one of the greatest reasons on why I, I like hearing about how people come to receive Jesus is, is how Jesus changes and transforms their life. And the scriptures tell us how the lives of Peter and the other disciples and how they were transformed. But in this particular section, in John chapter 21 here right now, the disciples, again, they were confused. They didn't know what to do. So they went back to doing what they thought was best. And while there's nothing wrong, I mean, there is nothing wrong with them going back to fishing because we know, I mean, it's, they needed to feed their family. They needed to survive. So the problem wasn't that they went back to fishing. 
The problem is that they went back fishing so casually after experiencing all, all that they experienced with Jesus. They went back so casually back to their old ways, back to fishing again. And they didn't have any real direction, purpose, or reason behind it. But we read in, if you continue reading in John chapter 21, we see that, that uh, there's an encounter between Peter and Jesus. And, and we see that with that encounter, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter says, yes, yes, yes. And afterwards, Jesus tells him, tells Peter, after every time he says yes, he tells him, go, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep. He tells him uh, that to remind him that he has a purpose, that his life was transformed for a reason. And what we see later on is that Peter becomes what? The, the rock of the church. Peter becomes a great ambassador, a great uh, a messenger, and a great leader within the church. And I want to encourage you today is that today you might not know why things are happening. But I want to encourage you that maybe tomorrow you might actually have a story on how God has changed your life. So we can always believe that something wonderful is going to happen when we are with God. So I want to end here and conclude here today with, uh, with a story that I, I actually saw. Actually, it's a video that I saw recently and uh, in regard in this week so this week i saw this video of how uh, a mom that that had conversations with her her great her, with her grandmother and how and how they were not able to embrace each other and so this mom she she had an ingenious idea and she created a way for her daughter to give great grandmother a hug and the way that she did it, she, she made a frame, just a, a frame, out of PVC piping. And then she covered that framing that she made with just plastic. And from with the, the plastic window there, what she did was she, she cut four holes out of it. And then she sealed the four holes with arm sleeves that were also made out of plastic. And when she did that, uh, she was able to, uh, this allowed, this allowed the great grandma who, were, who was missing the embrace and missing her grandchildren and great grandchildren and, and having that uh, uh, contact with them. This allowed the great grandma to come to the house and actually give uh, the gra great granddaughters and the granddaughter a wonderful hug and embrace without uh, any problems in regards to social distancing and, and, and things like that. But there was a protective cover, a covering between the two, the two that were embracing. So um, I wanted to remind all of us right now as that today, as you are, uh, wherever you may be, maybe you're, you're sitting down in your, your living room today, maybe again you're, you're, you're listening uh, on your phone right now, but wherever you are today right now, as you are watching this video today, please remember that God is embracing you today. He has his arms wrapped around you. He is lifting you up. He is embracing you, and things will get better. So I want to encourage us today as we, as we end here in uh, prayer. Let's pray together and let's pray for one another. But also let's continue to pray that we remember the fact that God is with us always. So please join with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord. And we recognize, Lord, that maybe, Lord, right now, life is not ideal. Things are not perfect. Things are not what we want, Lord, but we recognize and know that, God, you are with us, that you are embracing us today, that you are hugging us, that through you, Lord, we can experience continually that love and hope and grace and mercy and care. So thank you today, Lord. 
thank you today. And Lord, we know that we can continue to, to lift up our brothers and sisters to you, Lord God, that you will continue to give them strength, give them energy, give them encouragement, Lord. And Lord, may you just continue to remind us. When we look out the window, Lord God, we are reminded by the fact that you are around, that you are almighty God, that you're the creator of all things, that you sent your son, Jesus, to be our Lord and our Savior, to be the one that to have taken away our sins, Lord God, and forgiven us for our sins, Lord. So we thank you for that today, Lord God, that we can come before you knowing that we have a purpose and a plan. And in the meantime right now, Lord, we want to come together and continue to pray, Lord, for that when we come back to church, Lord God, when we, when we all come back to be able to embrace again one another, may we do it, Lord God, with a whole purpose and unity that is for you that lord we you have a plan for us lord you have a purpose and a vision for us lord to continue to share your gospel message but also to continue to be your salt and light so we thank you today lord god we love you lord we thank you that we can again come before you and recognize and know that you are there with us through everything we love you in jesus mighty name amen well, let's go ahead and end here with a wonderful opportunity to worship the Lord again as we end with this wonderful song today. So faithful so constant, so loving and so true, so powerful in all you do. You fill me, you see me, you know my every move, you love for me to sing to
Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Well, some announcements today. Um, I just want to remind all of us that to please continue to join us as we pray together each and every single night at 8 p.m. And again, we do this because we know that there is always power and unity in prayer. So let's continue to pray together as a church body uh, if, at every night at 8 p.m. each day. The other announcement is that I want to remind all of us that every Wednesday night, uh, please join us uh, with Zoom uh, for our Wednesday night Bible study. Currently, we are going through the book of Colossians. So please join us every Wednesday night at 6.30 through Zoom. All right, well, let's go ahead and end here today. I want to just pray a blessing on, upon everyone. So please join with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you again, Lord, today. We recognize again that you are sovereign God. And you have given us a purpose and a plan. And Lord, today we may not understand what is going on, but we know that you will prevail through all things, Lord. So today, Lord God, um, again, we will come before you here, recognizing that when we come back together, Lord God, you're going to continue to guide us and lead us. And we're going to work together to to bring your gospel message, Lord, to all that needs to know. But Lord, in the meantime right now, we're going to continue to pray for one another. We're going to continue to pray for each other. We're going to continue to pray for our neighbors, Lord. But also, Lord, we're going to, we're going to recognize and know that, again, through you, all things are possible. And today, Lord God, we are here. We are your people. And we pray that you will reveal to us, Lord, what we can do for you today and tomorrow. So thank you so much for your guidance. Thank you so much for your strength. Thank you so much for your energy. And Lord, as we just come before you, we recognize and know that you're with us. So may we walk with you daily. We love you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you all, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.